Welcome to Opal STV. Today I'm in Tampa, Florida, together with Dr. Intranel Das. He's the founder of Pearl Brook Capital. It's my first time in Tampa, and I've seen there's a lot of development going on in the city. And as many in our industry know, Jeff Winnick has been also very actively here helping to turn Tampa into a financial center. Jeff Winnick from Winnick Asset Management. So I wonder, Dr. Das, is this a coincidence or is there a connection that you are here in Tampa as well? I met Mr. Winnick a year into Pearl Brook's existence at his downtown Tampa office. That was also the month of August 2015 when China had uh, devalued the renminbi effectively and thrown the global stock markets into a tailspin. In the midst of that turmoil, our strategy was uh, had lost only a couple of percentage points, and that definitely triggered off uh, Mr. Vinick's interest. We also started discussing certain uh, ideas, and Mr. Vinick remarked that uh, this was exactly the way he thought of investing. So thus began a series of conversations which ultimately led to Mr. Vinick becoming a very significant partner to Pearlbrook Capital Management. His interest in Pearlbrook also aligns very well with his interest in developing Tampa into a financial ecosystem. Now, Dr. Das, I also know that you yourself have a successful history as an investment analyst and as a fund manager. Please tell us more about your background and your history. I have a PhD in operations research and an MBA in finance from Columbia Business School. I spent eight years in corporate R&D working for IBM Research, United Technologies Research, and ExxonMobil Research, and then crossed over to the institutional investing side. I worked on the global small and mid-cap team for a large US-based asset manager in their midtown Manhattan office for eight years. I started out there as an investment analyst and my last three years, I was a portfolio manager for their International Opportunities Fund. So I believe the firm you were referring to was American Century Investments. Even before I became a portfolio manager for that fund, I had a vision to translate the high alpha opportunities available in the international small and mid-cap space into an absolute return product. So I left my former firm in 2014 and I started Pearlbrook to bring that vision to fruition. A year after I had started Pearlbrook, I met Mr. Vinick at his downtown Tampa office, and eventually Mr. Vinick became a substantial participant in Pearlbrook. One of the important things that Mr. Vinick's partnership has brought to us is working capital and visibility into our operations. This is somewhat unique for a startup firm of our size. Right now we are three and a half years into our existence. We, I should also highlight that we have offices in downtown Tampa as well as in Mumbai. Because we have a huge footprint in our strategy in the European universe, our analysts in Mumbai, our two analysts in Mumbai can actually wake up well before we can. I mean, myself and my trader, we work European hours sitting in Florida, but uh, they can actually wake up a lot earlier and have the numbers ready for us. Dr. Daz, I wonder, how does your personal corporate background in R&D tie within your investment strategy now? My prior background as a corporate insider strongly influences how we interpret and interview company management. So despite all the good things that we see in the small and mid-cap space, in a, in a year like 2008, the small cap index was down 50%. I mean, that can cause very serious damage to an investor's portfolio. So we have figured out at Pearlbrook how our strategy can hedge a book of long-only small and mid-caps. So we hedge that with, uh, with a certain technique for shorting. Our work has actually shown that in the past few years, global shocks such as uh, the Brexit vote or the renminbi shock that we saw in August 2015, our strategy would have been down a couple of percentage points when the indices were down close to double digits. And also our work has shown that in a year like 2011 when the international small cap index was down 17%, uh, the strategy would have actually ended up in the black. 
it's worth highlighting that our our process is a mixture of a very quantitative front end where we source ideas and screen through ideas followed by a deep fundamental research once we find the companies that we like and once we start following them very important part of the process because of my former corporate background is interviewing company management talking to them on a pretty regular basis I get out on the road several times a year I go to conferences and even on country visits to go and meet companies out in Japan or Sweden or or Switzerland or, or even Canada so it's uh, it's the combination of all the things we do and some of the things we don't do that lend our strategy its unique character. Well, this is fascinating. I wonder, when you invest into a stock, what actual attributes are you looking for? The long positions in the strategy, they have two main concepts. The first is what we call hidden gems. These are companies that are not very well understood. They are hardly known outside their immediate geography. Their shareholder register consists of local investors. It could be an Italian company that has Italian investors and maybe a few across the border, but hasn't even crossed across the English Channel and let alone the, the Atlantic, and doesn't have US investors. As the name gets discovered, the shareholder register goes global. The coverage goes from two local brokers to several global brokers as well. When that happens, if management is also on the road telling the story, the stock tends to re-rate, i.e. get a higher valuation multiple. And it's all a, a virtuous cycle which takes the stock price up and results in a high degree of alpha generation as the stock goes up the discovery curve. The second important piece that we invest in is inflection points. We like names that are sitting at inflection points. And this applies to both our long positions as well as our short positions. An inflection point represents a turning point in the company's key performance indicators. And this is often well heralded by management commentary. At these inflection points, there tends to be a wide dispersion in street estimates. If we call the inflection point right, we go into a cycle of earnings upgrades. And when that happens, the stock typically also re-rates. So a combination of re-rating as well as higher earnings estimates generates alpha. Very often, we would be fortunate enough to find a hidden gem that is also at an inflection point, and these are the best attributors on the long side. And what about your shorts? How do they tie into your small and mid-cap investment philosophy? Well, after a decade of looking at small and mid-caps, uh, I consider myself fundamentally a student of the journey. The journey that a small cap company goes through as it turns into a mid cap name. So after a small cap company, which is let's call it a billion dollar company, has turned into a mid cap, let's call that a five to seven billion dollar company, the company has to reinvent itself. It either has to expand into its adjacent markets or it has to make a very clever acquisition that it can turn around and if, if it fails to do that, then we see certain attributes in the company's operating profile. So it would come out with company announcements where maybe one out of three divisions is perpetually underperforming and the division keeps on changing. So uh, we, call, we, we call these companies mediocre shorts. In other words, they have fallen into, uh, into a trap that they cannot grow out of. However, the street continues to ascribe them a high multiple that they had from their small cap growth years. We are not looking to short companies that are going to go bust because very often we find that such companies are obvious shorts that, that attract a lot of transactions, private equity investors or value investors. So we are looking for the middle third of the journey down and we would typically cover our short positions after one or two profit warnings and this tends to keep us out of trouble, if you will.